New tech just solved the biggest issues in gaming right now. I'm talking VRAM and storage needed get cut in half. But before I get to that, a new monster APU set to challenge AMD's best and Nvidia's releasing a new flagship GPU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay. It's news time and first up for today, Intel is apparently planning to hit AMD right in their APU. And I don't mean their regular mobile lineup. I'm talking about AMD's monster Ryzen AI Max APUs. As you can see right down here, it says Intel is reportedly preparing Nova Lake AX, a high-end laptop SoC. Now it says laptop, but just like AMD's Ryzen AI Max, they'll almost certainly come in small form factor desktops and things like that. Either way, it could combines a massive 52 core CPU complex with an expanded XE3 graphics tile. It says while the standard Nova Lake S is set to arrive in 2026, followed by the H and HX mobile variants, the AX model will debut later as the flagship SKU. Built on Intel's second generation Fabros technology, Nova Lake AX sacks two compute tiles, each one with 8P cores, 16E cores, as well as a separate low power island with four LPE cores. Not only that, but it adds up to over, potentially over 100 megabytes of last level cache. And of course, this is what feeds the CPU cores as well as that new iGPU. What's wild about the iGPU is that it potentially scales up to 20 to 24 XE3 cores. For reference, Intel's current Gen Arc B580 comes with just 20 XE cores. And of course, this is their XE2 cores, not their newer XE3 cores. Basically, this bad boy is set to be one monster of a chip. I mean, just the fact that we're talking 52 cores in a notebook CPU is unreal. Then we're even talking pretty decent desktop level of performance in the iGPU. Basically, Intel is not playing around when it comes to Nova Lake, and hopefully they do deliver, but of course time, as always, will tell. But first, I've got to say it. GPU prices are still completely insane. I mean, what is this? Luckily, there's a new place that was built specifically to help gamers get hardware at reasonable prices. And they sponsored today's video so I can tell you all about it. It's called Jawa, and it's the number one online marketplace built for gamers by gamers. But ultimately, it's a place where you can get awesome deals on PC hardware. Like this very nice GTX 1650 for just 90 bucks, or this 3050 for 150 $55. Or what about this Ryzen 5 3600 for 55 So whether it's CPUs, GPUs, motherboards, or even peripherals, Jawa has what you're looking for. And if you're worried about getting scammed, don't be. Because Jawa offers buyer and seller protection policies to ensure everything is legit. And if you can't afford the part you're looking for, sell your old GPU directly to Jawa to help offset the cost. If you don't want to build your own PC, Jawa also has tons of boutique pre-built PCs. Basically, when you're ready to save money on your PC build or have one built for you, check out Jawa today. And next up for today, NVIDIA's CEO recently sat down with US President Donald Trump, and apparently they came up with an agreement that would allow NVIDIA to sell more powerful GPUs to China. That of course might throw a wrench into their Double D plans, or V2 if I have to call it that, but it opens up plans for a new GPU that's looking very interesting. As you can see right down here it says, after months of regulatory hurdles and revenue fallout, NVIDIA is poised to initiate a bold company back in China with its upcoming RTX 6000D, a strategically modified Blackwell-based GPU designed to satisfy current export controls and restore lost market share. According to DigiTimes, the company plans to begin shipping the card in Q3 of 2025 with ambitions of targeting 1 to 2 million units by year in. Now, what's interesting about this GPU is that it's apparently not a derivative of the RTX Pro 6000, as Nvidia already has plans for a Pro 6000D, meaning this really could be something that essentially replaces the 5090 or is maybe even better. Remember that they have some really big ambitions for this. 
Now, one potential wrench into this is the fact that, according to this, it features GDDR7 graphics memory with around 1100 gigabytes per second of bi-directional bandwidth, which is not as much bandwidth as the 5090 has, but still, given the fact that this is RTX 6000 and not, say, 5090D or RTX 5000 or anything like that, it really could be better. Like I said, I initially thought that we were talking the RTX Pro 6000, okay, not that big of a deal, but as they state, it is different. Ultimately, this is definitely looking like one interesting GPU. And lastly for today, I have what's probably one of the biggest stories of the year so far. As many of you know, game requirements have been going through the roof lately, with two major things causing some serious issues, VRAM and file size. Video memory requirements have been getting so high that 12 gigabytes is starting to look like it's not enough, yet GPU makers refuse to give us more, and storage requirements are reaching absurd levels of the 100 gigabyte downloads becoming the norm. Luckily, we finally have an answer, and it starts with NVIDIA's Neural Texture Compression. Now, we first saw this a little while back in a research paper, but it's since been made a reality through support in RTX Remix, and we now have an official demo, which I'll get to in a second. But essentially, Neural Texture Compression, or NTC, is a new compression technique that uses a neural network to decompress textures in real time. And what's wild is that your compression ratio goes from 6 to 1 with traditional compression like BC7 to as much as 16 to 1 with NTC. Well, like I said, there's a new demo that uses both NTC as well as Microsoft's new cooperative vectors, which allow shaders to cooperate on large matrix workloads. And one user just shared the results on X. And let's just say it's huge. As you can see right down here, the transcoded version, this is the one without NTC. And you can see that it took up 79.38 megabytes of VRAM. This is obviously just a demo, so it's not like a huge game or anything like that, but I'll actually get to a real world example in just one second. Either way, as you can see, once you then turn on NTC, it brings that all the way down to 9.2 megabytes of VRAM. That's over an 88% drop. And here's the wild thing. While textures don't account for all the game's VRAM usage, it does account for roughly 50 to 60% of it. And using this information that we have, I asked ChatGPT to figure out what kind of a reduction we would see in a real game. I obviously didn't have to ask ChatGPT. This isn't exactly complicated math or anything. I just like the way it kind of shows everything here. Either way, as you can see, the game it used is Hogwarts Legacy, and in it, it normally gets total VRAM usage at 1440p Ultra around 11 to 12 gigabytes. And like I said, textures account for roughly 50 to 60% of that. So if we're looking at 12 gigabytes total VRAM, 6.5 gigabytes are accounted as textures with 5.5 gigabytes for everything else. And then if we take this math with NTC, we're looking at 0.76 gigabytes for textures, which brings the total VRAM usage of 6.3 gigabytes. Meaning with NTC, if this game used it, we would be looking at around a 47% reduction in total VRAM usage. And that is obviously huge. That would mean GPU makers wouldn't even need to release GPUs with more VRAM. It would be as if all GPUs magically got double their current memory. And things get even better from here, as he also states that NTC can be great for download sizes as well. It says your next AAA games could be 50 gigabytes smaller. Basically, this is something that could completely turn gaming on its head, helping to finally reduce costs for gamers. And better yet, both AMD and Intel are working on their own versions of it. So while that does it for today, what do you think about Nvidia's new tech? And don't forget to visit Jawa down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.